looking for my damn straight cutter. Trust. That's what we're gonna talk about today, family, as we sit back and smoke us a cigar. We're gonna talk about trust. Who can you trust? Who should you trust? I had a couple of situations this week where I had to uh, ask myself that question. And we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna smoke the Milanio. 2023 perfecto size. I'll get all of the other uh, stuff together here. Oh, as soon as I get this thing to focus. It's got another one of those shiny, shiny, shiny band. So it's hard to take a picture of it because everything is reflecting. It's also very hard to do this. There's your density. <laughs> Y'all hang on, I'll be right back. your boy Lee Magnant. Well, boy, I got a lot of stuff on my mind today. A lot of stuff on my mind today. I got some stuff I want to say and sometimes my better, my better judgment, my good friends, my family members that care about me will say, Lee Mac, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. That's cool. Some days I listen to y'all. Today ain't one of them damn days. <laughs> it ain't one of them damn days because I got some shit on my mind. I don't even think I made it to two minutes before I let that one fly. Today we're going to be smoking. This is what is called the Oliva V. It's the uh, Milanio Edition Año. I gotta figure out how to say 2023 in Spanish. Hold on, let me ask my friend. Como, como se dice 2023 in Espanol? Oh, 2023. So it's the uh, 2023. 2023 for the rest of us in the English speaking world. But anyway, this is a, uh, they call this ship a figurino. Limited edition from Oliva Cigar comes in a perfecto shape. It's five and a half inches long, 54 ring gauge. So 54 is going to be in the middle at its widest point. It's got a round shape. Unlike other Milanios, which are box press. Tapered at both ends. It's got the same blend as the original Alan, Alanio, Siri V. Milanio, which includes an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler, full strength and flavor. So that's good because I just ate a nice hearty meal. I made myself some of that uh, uh, bourbon chicken that they always have in the mall that they're trying to give you little samples on a toothpick to get you to buy it, the little Chinese joint. Yeah, I made my own. Uh, let's see, the flavors, they say toasted almond, creamy nougat, bittersweet chocolate, red pepper, and espresso. Earthy and woodsy undercurrents. And, uh, let's see what the price is. I got this one from my friends over at BL and Luxuries. BL and the Luxury. So let's go over there and see if they have it on their website for, for whatever you want to do with it. When you get to their website and put it in your cart and hit the, uh, Ching button, you know how it go. But right now they are going to be closed starting Friday 22nd through Wednesday, March 27th, because they're going to the PCA 2024 in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. As my boy Chase and Andrew say, you don't say. <laughs> We're gonna talk about who can you trust and who should you trust, family. 
but I want to get some cigar details out the way up front right quick so we can get on back. Because some people say, Lee Mac 912, you do all this talking about everything. You ain't got nothing to do with the damn cigar. So I'm going to give you some of this stuff that has to do with the cigar. I believe the MSRP on this one might be $20. They have them over at BL for $18. So a little tiny cigar for $18. Shout out to my brother Charlie over at Half Wheel. The Figurino. Figurino, I believe it is. Yeah, MSRP is uh, $20. It's limited to 14,500 boxes of 10. Uh, nice box. Originally offered as part of the special Ellie Blue Humidor that I'll leave a commission in 2021. In keeping with the theme, the humidors contained 21 figurinos, and there were only 21 of these humidors made, and they were priced at $21,000 a piece, or 21 pounds, depending on the market. Figurino came after a long discussion between himself, Gilberto Oliva, and the team at LE Blue. All right. Yada, 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 yada. We just want to know what does it taste like and how am I going to cut it and all this other stuff. I'm going to cut a straight cut. I'm going to cut it straight on down the way. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to get on into this thing and we're going to see what it do. Shout out to your brother, Dexter. Shout out to your brother, Dexter. Mm. Can't really tell what the uh, draw is like because we are down to that tapered end there, so. Man, I just does not want to focus on my, my mug today at all. There we go. But we're gonna see what it is. We wanna take you higher. We wanna take you higher, family. I've been kinda low this week a couple of times. They tried to drag me down, they tried to take me out, but you know, I ain't never gonna take the kid out. I might fly a little lower for a day or so. And after that, you're gonna say, damn, he's back. I thought we had him. <laughs> we thought we had him. <laughs> we thought we had him. We called in the reinforcements from, uh, you know, China and Japan and all of the overseas countries. We was giving it to him. We was giving him hell. We thought we had him. We thought we had him out of here. <laughs> negativo, Henita Fantasma. You did not, Ghost Rider. That's gonna be a negative. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, come on, let's go, y'all. Who should you trust? And we all have different reasons for who we trust and why we trust these different people that we trust. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to say which one is right. And I'm not going to say which one is wrong. I had an occasion today, as a matter of fact, to deal with a guy. I'm going to call him a brother. In this county that I live in. That... In some part, in the not-so-near-distant past... Some folks around here forgot that they uh, lost the Civil War. They forgot they lost the Civil War. And they want to remind themselves and other people around them that they are proud Southerners. So I had to go see one of them proud Southerners today. How did I know he was one of them proud Southerners? Because he had that big ass flag in his garage. I mean, it went all the way from the top of the wall, top of the ceiling, all the way down to the bottom. It was a big ass flag. What's up, bro? How you doing? Lee Mack. 
So I talked to him, we had a good conversation, we concluded our business, and uh, at the end of the conversation, he says, look, come on by any time. If you see the garage door up, I'm, o I'm here. Come on by, we'll go ride or do something or whatever. You see me, just stop by. Some folks should say that I maybe shouldn't uh, trust this guy because he's a part of them people over there that is still fighting the war. Maybe it was his father. Maybe it wasn't him. I don't know. When you start out with these uh, figurinos, these pecker, these this figurino and perfecto, it starts out with a real tight draw, so you kind of have to smoke it a little while let it open up as the burn gets to the fatter part of the cigar and see what it tastes like because right away we don't get a whole lot of smoke the draw is kind of constricted and you're not really sure of the flavor so i'm going to say it is kind of right now sweet tobacco No pepper at all. No pepper at all right now. None. Zero. Zippo. It's an $18, $18, $20 cigar now. We're going to see where we're going. We got a lot of bands on this damn thing. We got bands everywhere. So that's, that's, that's the first brother I'm going to talk about. Now I'm going to talk about my Uncle Junior. My Uncle Junior is deceased many years now. He's my mother's brother. Her oldest brother. So, I remember once as a kid having this, this conversation was being had between my mother and her brother. And... The end of the conversation kind of went something like this. My mother says, well, the last place that I go to thinking is that somebody is treating me this way because I'm black. I try to make that my last way of thinking. This is what my mama said, right? My Uncle Junior said, that's my first place I go. Mm-hmm. So my mama would trust one set of people, Uncle Junior would trust some other set of people. I had a situation this week. I ain't going to say where, and I ain't going to say what it was about. But I'm going to say that it comes down to enforcing the rules, right? You ever dealt in a situation where there were rules, but we kind of know what the rules are. And the rules is over here, but we kind of, you know, skirt the edges of the rules. And, we you know, we know that we kind of not, we're, we're breaking the rules. But we know we're breaking the rules, but we're breaking it for a good cause or a good purpose or whatever the case is, right? But it's a generally accepted principle because everyone does it. I'll give you a good example. The very first day that I went to work for the government, they said, uh, here's the hours or whatever. You take a, a, a half hour lunch from, you can go from whatever time to whatever time. It's a half hour. Everybody takes an hour. But on the books, it's a half hour. Generally accepted principle, everybody's taking an hour. But you're only charging a half hour. So I had one of those situations this week where all of a sudden now they wanted to come talk to me and said, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to give you a little discipline because you was taking an hour for lunch. That's an example. That's not what it's about, but you took an hour for lunch. All of a sudden now we want to start enforcing the rules. So really? 
Yeah, I know everybody else is doing it, but I can't say, but look at everybody else, because I ain't no snitch. And I know there's a whole other bunch of set of rules that uh, folks ain't paying attention to. Including you who's writing me up, but you know, okay, it's cool. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. But who should you trust? This is opening up, I'm gonna say it's got a, a clean, crisp finish to it. Tobacco. Now, I know out of the Olivas, I'm not a big, big, big Oliva fan. I know a lot of folks like the Oliva V. Melanio, my number one moderator, Latanya. The Melanio is like one of her favorite cigars, can always go into rotation or whatever the case is. And the Melanio is not a very expensive cigar from what I remember. This has got the same shape, I mean the same blend, but a different shape. So let me go back here and do a little research. 850 for a Robusto, I can find the Milanio. There's a Toro I can get for about 1170. Number four, number four, what size is that? That's a 46 ring gauge, four and a half. I can get that for like 7.89. So not an expensive cigar, but now this one is $20 or $18 over there at BL. Smooth retro hail. Retro is smooth. It's smooth, and what I'm gonna say is smooth, creamy. Tobacco, that's all I'm getting. Smooth, creamy tobacco. But I thought we was all skirting the rules. So I thought I could trust you. I might need to go back over to my man with the uh, with the Southern Pride flag because at least I can kind of see what he represents because it's out front. And since he said, come on by and we'll, uh, you know, chop it up and do some things, I get a chance to talk to him and I'll be able to ask him about it. It's a little bit different about some of these other folks that, I don't know, they keep their sheets on their bed. But I got some more people to talk about. That would keep on talking. I got some more people to talk about. So we are drinking today. We are drinking an IPA. This is uh, Freak Week. And this is a collaboration between uh, other half, the other half brewery and Dogfish Head. So this is the uh, 60 minute IPA. So basically what happens is Dogfish Head sends over to the other half their recipe for the 60 minute IPA and they brew it up and put it in their cans. So, good deal. I'm not a type of guy that's going to chase after you for something. I actually chase a little bit more than I should only because I know that, hey listen, the closed mouth doesn't get fed. The uh, you gotta you gotta be persistent in what it is that you do and what you're asking for, and you have to, you know, you have to continually ask sometimes for what it is that you want. All right, look now. I took off the 2023 band. I didn't realize this red one underneath it was like this. Well, it's got a little Scantron joint on there. It's got some words on here. Scan this QR code and listen to Frederick. Though I can't say that big ass name. 
Fender somebody. While he unwraps the full story behind the figurino shape. So there you go. So if you go here, you can get the whole story behind the figurino shape. All right. Now, I tend to like these Figurados, man, I don't know if they're called Perfectos, where they're pointing on both ends. What I like about it is you start out with a very small diameter, it gets fat, and then it changes. So I kind of feel like the flavor changes as it goes from small to bigger, smaller, bigger. Right now, has the flavor changed? Not really. It's just kind of... Not tasting like $20 to me. I think this tastes like I could have got two of those regular ones for the same price and maybe had a better experience so far. But anyway, we're gonna see. Good smoke output. What I will say is that it is definitely a very creamy smoke. Feels like smooth and silky on your in your mouth, and the smoke tastes smooth and silky. But as far as the variety of flavors, tobacco, I'm kind of like that's all I'm kind of getting right now. All right, I stuck a pen in what I was. I know where I was at. Most of the times, I forget where I was at. I was saying I don't like to chase after people, but sometimes in sales, what you've learned is that you can't just ask for the sale one time. Sometimes you have to continually ask for the sale in order to get the sale. So I might ask for the sale and get a response. I might get no response. I might get a positive or a negative response. No means not no, no means not yet. So it's one of those sales things, right? So. I can take my Uncle Junior's way of thinking and say, when you said no, you said no because you don't like the way I look. I can take my mama's way and say, no, it's just some other reason why you're not ready yet and I'll have to give you time to become ready. But sometimes family, when people show you who they are, who they really, really are, you gotta believe them. And I know that we're chasing down and we're trying not to be uh, negative and we're trying to get the sale and we're trying to get where we wanna go and we don't wanna let folks block you off, but it is a lot easier to deal with people who you know may or may not like you or may or may not want you on their team than those who kind of string you along and act like they do, but in reality, they don't. See, cause their representative is what's presented to you in the world, and their representative is going, yes, we'd love to have you, we want you, we love you, we'd love to have you. That's what their representative is saying. But in reality, what's happening in the background, we writing you up for infringing the rules. We're not calling you back. We're promising you something, but then we're not following through. And what I've come to find out is that it really doesn't matter what those folks look like. Some of them look like me. Some of them don't look like me that do that. What we have to learn to do is be smart and learn how to identify those people. And then rock with those who rock with you. And leave them other folks alone. Let them do what they do. Because the truth of the matter is, we passed two minutes. As my friend Latanya would say, they don't really fuck with you like that. So you got to learn, family, when people don't fuck with you like that, don't fuck with them. Just let it go. Find somebody that does. Like my brother around the corner with the Southern Pride flag. 
And I won't finish that story to let you know how I know that he rocks with me and I can rock with him. But anyway, so I'm going to sit on back, family. We're going to smoke the rest of the cigar right now. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what I'm thinking about this cigar. I think this cigar is just kind of blah, blah. I'm getting plenty of draw. Good smoke output. I'm going to take a deeper puff. The deep puff brings out a little bit of a, a, a bite, bitterness to it. So, all right, I'm going to get my little little thing here, scan it, and I'll be back. All right, family. Uh, maybe I was a little bit slow. Maybe I'm a little bit slow. I scanned this thing here, and it said... Watch while he unwraps the full story behind the Figurado shape. What I watched was none of that. What I watched was a marketing fluff piece talking about the Champs d'Elysee in France being one of the most expensive retail shapes and how we've got a beautiful box of cigars and develops the flavors, but nothing about what the cigar nerd might want to know about this shape and why you developed the shape. Maybe I watched the wrong video. Seems like to me they're trying to explain to me why this cigar is so expensive and I should want to pay the 18 to $20 price for it. But right now, Ghost Rider, I'm saying I'm not feeling like this is a $20 cigar. Yes, is this a more expensive shape to roll? Absolutely. So am I going to kick on a couple of extra bucks for the shape? Yeah, I may. But I took the same blend and put it into a different shape and doubled the price that's like some magic type of magically delicious trick right there boy the creaminess is is, is picking up still along with that bite which is picking up I almost wanted to say it was like vanilla or something like that in the creaminess but I'm not gonna say that because doesn't hang around here long enough. All right, family, I'll be back. Yeah, I ain't impressed right now. I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not entertained. So we shall see. Anybody else I need to talk about? Two of them last people that did all of this representative talking to me in my face. <laughs> what look like this and what look like that. <laughs> so you just can't judge a book by its cover, family. You got to stick with the folks that uh, that mean you some good and don't mind working with you. I mean, I swear I don't mind if we disagree on things. We could disagree on stuff and just still work together very well. Latanya and I disagree on a lot of things and we go back and forth and we uh, 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 and we come to the middle. All right, here's a solution. We don't always have to agree, but we should always be honest. So if you're gonna work with somebody, we wanna have a relationship. I gotta know that I can trust what you tell me is what you mean and what it is that you are going to do. If you say you're gonna do it, you know, my wife will say, well, did you call them and make sure? No, I'm not calling and make sure because the people who I work with, when I ask them to do something and we agree, it's a handshake, it's an agreement. We don't have to call and make sure. If I said I was going to be there at 6, I'll be there 10 minutes to 6 and vice versa. Shout out to your shipmate, Dion. All right, all right, all right, all right, family. I did snip the tip off a little bit more to see if I could open it up a little bit. Not that I was unsatisfied with the draw that I was getting. I just wanted to see if the flavors would change. It's picking up a little bit of mineraliness. But the one thing it's definitely not picking up is excitement on my end. I think this is just not an exciting cigar in this size. Uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. It's just full strength and flavor. It's not full strength at all. Uh, strength on this one, mild. 
Now, maybe it's just me. And y'all can let me know in the comments, but what I'm getting, mild, 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 mild. A very mild. Mineral bite. Almost feels like I need to purge it. I have to say, family, uh, very disappointed. Very disappointed. Uh, again, I'm I'm not a big Mila uh, Oliva fan, uh, even though Oliva makes the Oliva, not the cigar company, the Oliva tobacco company puts out tobacco for a lot of different folks, but this ain't it. This is not it. I'm surprised. This shape is one that I love. So we're getting into the fatter part of it now. We'll see what happens as it comes down towards the end. But it's pretty much the same ring gauge all the way up to the end where it tapers down. So I'm not going to be smoking down past that end there. So it's pretty much going to be what it is until we get to the end. They're talking about the creamy nougat I get. Toasted almond. Bittersweet chocolate. I'm definitely getting the bitterness. Oh, ow. That retro hell. That, that, I'm going to sit this down for a while and let it just cool off. It, it, it's picking up a weird bitterness, bittery taste to it. Red pepper, no. Espresso, no. Maybe it's that earthy and woodsy undercurrent. It's just not good to me. I know, don't say nothing about my damn Oliva V. Melania. That's blasphemous. Almost like what you said about Padron. <laughs> Shout out to Brother Og, Brother, Brother Harry. Shout out to you, Brother uh... <sighs> Matt Bailey. I see you. Hey, bro, Matt, hey, uh, you know, bro, Matt, funny, man. He done sent them people to come get me because I was just minding my damn business a couple of times this week. But it's like, uh, so how you doing, driver? Because I know you're a truck driver because, you know, you got to be identified with a truck driver. You walk around with that big ass headset on your, on, on your, on your, on your head there. What's up, driver? Where you from? I'm from Florida. I said, oh. What part of Florida are you from? Oh, oh, you from the same town over there by Matt Bailey? Okay, my bad. Be cut is the way. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> All right, family. Oops. Smoking the Siri V Milano from Oliva, the Figurino. $18 cigar. Um, she's really just not doing what it's supposed to do she's not doing what she's supposed to do can't keep it straight i've tried to touch it up a couple of times uh as we're getting closer to the end it's getting more bitter 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 is a good damn word bitter and minerally lead graphite it's starting to heat up to me, this is just not a good cigar family. I don't know, maybe I got a bad sample. I know the Siri V Milanio in this blend is typically a very good cigar. A lot of folks like it. I've liked it in the past, but this one is just ain't doing it. It just ain't, it just ain't doing it. And it's getting hot. I think I just said that it's getting, the smoke is getting hot. So family, this is kind of a long video. I did have a lot to say and a lot to talk about, right? So, you know, one of the things that you also have to remember as you're dealing with all of those different types of folks and those people, you got to remember why you have yourself in that situation to start with. So you may have a goal, 
you may have something to accomplish. This is like a guy who works a, uh, a crap part-time job and he goes to that crap part-time job every day. And he's been going to that crap part-time job every day for 10 years, you know? And he just puts up with all of the crap and puts up with all of the crap and puts up with all of the crap. But what nobody knows is that with his part-time job money, what he's been doing is building his beautiful dream retirement home. So he's got a reason why he puts up with the crap because every year he does a little bit more. In fact, he first went out and he found the land and then he had it one year he had the land cleared and then eventually he planted some gardens he had nothing on the land but he planted some gardens because he saw in his head that this is what he was going to do then he built the foundation came back another couple of years and he put up the structure and one year he closed it in put in windows and doors and locks now it was really starting to look like a house finished the outside and it sat that way for a long time as he worked that crap part-time job every single night then when there was a day that came when this guy went to the part-time job and his house was done he had it up he had it furnished the lights were on everything was ready and he went in that night and they gave him a bucket load of crap. And he told them where they could shove their job and turned around and walked out the door. So you don't want to be rash with your decisions when you're dealing with people that are not treating you the way that you want to be treated. If you got a goal, if you can use those folks to help get you towards your goal, don't make rash decisions. Sometimes you got to sit down and shut up and uh, remember why you're there. But this cigar family, that's going to be a negative ghost rider. I'm not really digging this cigar at all. I'm going to sit this one down, pick up something else because I'm really not enjoying it at all, at all, at all, at all. But I can give you some numbers on it, though. I'm gonna give you some numbers for the price. Eighteen twenty dollars. I'm gonna say it's less than average for the price. I'm gonna give this a two point eight on the price. Flavor just average. I mean nothing special. No ups, no extras. It's like an old herb shy paint job. Construction is a five. Overall smoking experience for me is a two point eight, which gives this one a three point three out of five on the Lee Mac nine twelve scale. Family, when you wake up in the morning, you gotta tell yourself today's gonna be another great day. You gotta tell yourself that because you don't know why. You are, no, that, that's all wrong. The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie, so you might as well tell it a good dog on a lie. That's what you might as well do. And that's what I've been doing, family, for over 16 years. So as I deal with those folks, I remember why I started. I remember what my goals are. And sometimes I just got to go up and tell them. <laughs> as they say in my old neighborhood you can kiss my black ass and turn around and walk out the door we're gonna see y'all next time family peace